Thank you all for being with me today. I thought we would go over an arrest that we did yesterday along with the Florida Highway Patrol. And here's where it started. A 27-year-old man was stopped in the Kathleen area on State Road 35A, which is the Kathleen Road. He pulled into a neighborhood. He was driving a blue Chevy pickup truck without a tag. And when the trooper approached him, he wouldn't get out of the vehicle. He wouldn't talk to him. He said he didn't have a right to stop him. He said, I have a the t triangle on the back of my vehicle because it's a farm vehicle. I don't have to register it. The trooper noticed the butt of a firearm, so he retreated back to his car because this Samuel Doolin was not cooperating and asked for assistance. Other troopers responded as well as sheriff's deputies. When we got there, we immediately talked to the troopers and we began to hail him and direct him to get out of the vehicle and to show us his hands. Well, he showed us his hands, but he wouldn't get out of the vehicle. He said it was an illegal traffic stop. So our deputies continued to request him to get out of the vehicle. He continued to resist. He had his girlfriend with him. She got to be a part of this and even got some charges as a result. She's Tiffany Bean. So now you've got Samuel Doolin and Tiffany Bean in the vehicle. We break the back window out of the pickup truck. He still refuses to get out of the vehicle. We immediately tased him, and once the taser struck him, he became more compliant. We pulled him out of the vehicle and arrested him. Here's what we learned. He wouldn't identify himself. He wouldn't get out of the vehicle. We saw a handgun, and when we asked him about all this, he said, well, you know, I'm kind of a sovereign, and I don't recognize state law enforcement. They have no authority over me. This was an illegal stop. Only the elected sheriff has authority, law enforcement authority. Well, he learned before the day was over that he was right. The sheriff's office does have authority, and we appropriately charged him. But he also learned the state troopers have authority as well because they charged him as well. We took him into custody. Tiffany immediately lost interest in wanting to resist any further, so she was simply arrested and taken into custody for resisting. Samuel Doolin is the older brother to one of the Doolins that was arrested as a, as a response to the January 6th event by the FBI. It's the same family. Quite frankly, when we got there, he, he showed the hands, but he was not getting out of the truck. We had no right to take him out of the truck because the State Highway Patrol had no right to stop him, no right to arrest him or detain him. Well, he learned differently. So at the end of the day, he's in jail, charged with a lot of different charges. He posted bond and was just about to get out of jail. However, my detectives went and added another charge that you may not be aware of, of carrying a concealed firearm, because the way he was carrying these firearms was illegal. During our investigation, we learned not only was he carrying firearms, but he had altered the handgun, the Glock, and he'd also altered the, AK, or the AR-15 so that they were fully automatic. That's another violation of law. So he's picked up several felony charges. It's interesting, he went from no arrest to several very significant arrests with altering guns to be fully automatic. Now he says, this is what he told us, that he was an Army Ranger and he was just released from the military because he wouldn't take a COVID shot. I don't know if that's valid or not, but I know that's what he told our detectives and deputies. So this is one more example of the Florida Highway Patrol and the Sheriff's Office working together to ensure the safety and security of the community. He had the ability to be very violent, and we just thank God that he didn't pull that gun and start shooting a fully automatic firearm at the troopers before we got there or at us either. But he's in jail, the community's safe, he's facing a lot of serious charges. 
because of the relationship with his younger brother and him being under federal charges, we've also notified the FBI. So in the event they want to tack on any federal charges as well, that's their decision. We won't, we won't make that decision. We can't make that decision. However, he says he has sovereign tendencies, and today he has jailhouse tendencies. You know what I'm saying? So that's our Christmas present to him, early present. When you don't lie, obey the law, we're going to lock you up. Merry Christmas. Sir, can you speak to how dangerous it is to convert guns to fully automatic? Well, first and foremost, it's against the law, makes it a felony. And in addition to that, a fully automatic firearm can ma uh, malfunction. Uh, and the reason they can malfunction is because if you look at the way these were altered, and you'll see that, there's several ways to alter firearms, and obviously I'm not going to discuss all of them with you. But one is to buy a piece of equipment and put in it. The other is to alter the existing equipment, and that appears to be what he did on this case. So even if you're not violating any other law, when you alter it, you're violating the law, plus you're putting yourself at risk, even if you're altering it just for the sport of shooting an automatic firearm, it's, it's dangerous. Do you think there's a connection between I have no idea about that. I do know he said he was sovereign and that he did not have to obey the law. Newsflash, you do, and the sovereigns that don't pay attention to the law get to learn about it the hard way. Interestingly enough, even though he doesn't have to obey the law from the state troopers, he had a copy of the statute dealing with farm vehicles in his car and he was using that as the evidence that this is a farm vehicle no it's not it's a registered pickup truck without a tag and you can't operate that on the roadway had he just capitulated to the stop the trooper would have written him a citation and away he would have gone more than likely but the deeper they got into it and noticed the, fi the concealed firearms and his resistance, it ele elevated very quickly. We're fortunate that he did not aggressively try to hurt the trooper or any of our deputies. And because he didn't, we didn't hurt him. Chair, would you believe that he may be in possession of other automatic firearms? on his property or something. I mean, have you guys searched that? Or, or? We, we have to limit the arrest to the immediate vicinity. We don't have any information or any reason at this point in time to execute a search warrant on his property. So we don't know what else he may or may not have. What we do know is he picked up several felony criminal charges. What we know is he was not a felon before. He wasn't a, or he didn't have any criminal record before. So he managed to go from ostensibly a law-abiding citizen to picking up a lot of serious felony charges that he's now facing over simply not having a tag on his truck. Now, come on, man. It doesn't take rocket science to figure out in the state of Florida when everybody else has got a tag on their car, you got to have one, too. And if you don't, then we're going to cite you and take the appropriate action. And as a result, he chose to do it the hard way. We can do it the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. The state of Florida has determined you have to have a tag to operate your vehicle on public property. He ignored the law. He went to jail. Any indication, Any indication on how we plan to use the weapons? against law enforcement because clearly he doesn't have any respect or doesn't uh, you know, embrace the authority of law enforcement or at a school or any place else. No, actually he told the trooper when the trooper said, why do you have these firearms? He said, well, I have it to protect myself from law enforcement. So he had those firearms, according to him, to protect himself from law enforcement. He did not pull the weapon out. 
he clearly showed his hands to us. But we find that all of that suspicious. If, in fact, he was an Army Ranger, my experience is that Army Rangers are top-of-the-line people and wonderful people and heroes. And all of a sudden he goes from Ranger, if that's accurate, to making a fully automatic weapon out of one that's not to protect himself from law enforcement. What you see here is a guy that's got a screw loose, but we tightened it up for him. Does it concern you, Sheriff, considering his family's history with January 6th and all, that he had those type of weapons, that he made those type of statements? I mean, does that draw even more concern to you? Well, it just follows the sovereign thought process, and he already admitted that to us. But anyone who has a firearm and displaces it, let me say that again. Anybody who has a firearm displays it, possesses it, and threatens that it's here to protect them from law enforcement, that's a person we need to be concerned with. Now, having said that, we saw the polar opposite while we were there in that he completely showed us his hands the whole time and never offered any overt motions to grab the gun. So it's important to point out that he cooperated in the sense that he showed us his hands, but he wasn't getting out of the car. He was not agreeing to the traffic stop. And I guess he thought at some point in time we'd go, okay, it seems like you know the law. Let us go leave you alone. That's not how it works. You know, so he had to learn the hard way. But, you know, there are many of us that are going to have different kinds of Christmas presents this year. His Christmas present from us is felony charges. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Can you give me a quick primer on automatic weapons? Did he make the Glock and the AK-47 into an automatic weapon? Both the handgun and the rifle. And the rifle was cut, the barrel was cut off, so it was illegal because it was too short. So he had a short barrel rifle that he had transferred over to a fully automatic firearm. And the same thing with his handgun. And we have some pictures of ammunition drums that were fully loaded that he had for those firearms with him. With his relatives connected to January 6th, we're hearing that his cousin is Jonathan Pollock, who's still on the run. Do you think his arrest could maybe help you guys track him down or help federal authorities track him down? I don't know whether or not Jonathan Pollock is his cousin or not. I, I mean, I don't know if he is, he is. I, I'm not familiar with that. So certainly, he, when we took him into custody, he asked for an attorney, so he's not interested in talking to us. Yeah, he seemed to be well-versed in the law in, in his mind, but he asked for an attorney. So do I think it'll help? No, but at the end of the day, Pollock will surface. They will find him. And at that point in time, he'll be taken into federal custody. So the bottom line is, he can have this looming over his head for however many years that he wants to. The charges aren't going away. And it would be much better for him to turn himself in, deal with it, man up, take responsibility, use his lawyer, go to court. If he didn't do anything wrong, he'll be found not guilty. If he did, he needs to pay the price. He needs to man up and take responsibility. Or he can run like he's doing now and eventually... Some law enforcement someplace in the United States will come across him, and then we'll arrest him. Then he'll go through that process. So my statement to Mr. Pollock is, you know, you know, you can keep running. You can keep hiding. But eventually you're just going to go to jail tired and stressed from having to worry about it because you're going to go to jail over this. How concerned are you with that family and their thought process? I mean, being in your county... In North Lakeland, I mean... Well, there's 750,000 people in the county, and there's 20-plus million in the state of Florida. Every now and then, you're going to run across somebody who presents to be dangerous. This family, by and large, has not been violent toward us, ever. We've had traffic stops on some of the families, given them traffic citations, but Samuel has chose to have this gun, and he wasn't dangerous or violent toward us. 
He had the tools to be violent and dangerous, but he wasn't. Thank goodness. So at the end of the day, we take everyone serious that poses a threat. And our statement to Mr. Doolin here and to his family is, behave. Follow the law. That's, this law is created to protect all of us, to protect the Doolins, the Pollocks, and everybody else in the United States. And you have two choices. You can be on the right side of the law, or you can be on the wrong side of the law. If you're on the wrong side of the law, the right side of the law is going to come after you. It's your choice. How do you want to go to jail? Okay? Anything else? Can we have a close-up to those? Over here.